pray. Lord, we thank you for your holy word. We ask that you would help us to be like Ezra, who devoted himself to the study of your word, the observance of your word, and the teaching of your word. We ask in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, our text for today is from the Gospel lesson from Luke chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. Danielle, if you would please show everyone this picture. I want everyone to see this picture of the Good Samaritan, because I'm going to be talking about it in just a little bit. But what it shows is the extreme love. When Jesus talks about the second greatest commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself, he gives us this example of what it means to love our neighbor as ourself. To go to such extreme love that you would love an enemy as the Samaritans and the Jews were enemies, and the Jew was hurt, and the Samaritan helped him out. So go real close to everyone, about six feet away from each person. Let him get a good look at that picture. I think the artist did a great job. Go closer, Danielle. Get close to each person, please. The point is that Jesus talked about extreme love when we are to love our neighbor as ourself. And he gives us the first commandment as well, to love God with everything we have, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Extreme love. So we're going to take a look at these two greatest commandments today from Matthew 22, beginning at verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Thanks. When they were testing Jesus with this question, that was a difficult one to answer because there are over 600 laws in the Old Testament. Of course, we all know the Ten Commandments. But if Jesus was to focus on one of them, then they could say, well, you don't care about these other commandments? And so they would have a reason there for to arrest him. But Jesus answers so wisely, so amazingly, because he sums up all the laws in two commandments. The first of which is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Now that is calling us to extreme love. To love God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind. Now first of all, what is your soul? Because we understand that we have a body, but our soul is who we really are. A soul is a moral being designed for everlasting life. Again, a soul is a moral being designed for everlasting life. Another point about a soul is you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. Again, you don't have a soul. You are a soul. You have a body. So, who you are, to love God with who we are, with our will, what we want to do, with our personality, with everything that we have. We are challenged by this commandment to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. Now notice he says, Love. Love. And so that is so different from so many other religions. For example, the Muslim religion, where you're so afraid of God. And even when you die, you don't know if you're going to their heaven or their hell. But our God asks us to love him. It's the greatest commandment. And to love is different than fear, much different. 
Matter of fact, Martin Luther discovered all of this in the Reformation. For he was afraid of God. He was so afraid of God because of the fact that God is holy. And he realized his sin. And he had terror about what was going to happen to him because as he saw these commandments, he realized he could not live according to these commandments because these are such challenging commandments. So he was afraid of God. But then he discovered the gospel. He discovered those wonderful gifts that God gives to us, a forgiveness and everlasting life because Jesus Christ paid for our sins on the cross. Yes, all of us are sinners. We do fall short of loving God. We do fall short of loving our neighbors. But thank God, Jesus lived the perfect life for us. He died on the cross. He rose again. So that now, through faith in Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You have a home in heaven above. Thank God for that. And you see, this inspires us to love God with all of our heart, soul, and mind when we realize his incredible love for us, that Jesus would die to give us heaven. That is amazing. As 1 John 4 puts it, we love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. God has loved us so much, and so we now are inspired to love him. In return. We love him with all our heart as we sing hymns to God. We love him with all our heart. We love him with all our soul, with all our being. In other words, we, we make it a point to come to church to worship Jesus. Our, it's our will, our soul. In other words, our decisions that we make. We would maybe rather sleep in or do something else. But out of love for God, we love him with all our soul. We come to worship our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as he has called us to do in his holy word, the Bible. As a matter of fact, Jesus made it a custom to go to the synagogue every Sabbath. And of course, we don't worship on Saturday. We worship on Sunday because Jesus rose on Sunday. But we do follow Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 4, we read of Jesus. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom when he stood up to read. Notice it says, on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom. Jesus was there every Sabbath to worship the Lord, to hear the word of God, and we likewise honor the Sabbath, though we remember it on Sunday, the day of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we take time for God's people, for God's work, we take time to praise God, to show our love for God, loving Him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And so, for example, in our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, we carefully teach the Word of God. We love Him with all our mind. We put a strong emphasis on Christian education. Of course, you know, we have our confirmation classes. For example, we have higher education in our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, at the universities. For our pastors, we were we require many years of higher education. We take this very seriously to love God with all our mind. And our hymns, the songs that we sing are carefully selected, that they accurately reflect the Bible. So we then show our love to God. We are so thankful for His amazing love for us. We show our love to God, coming to church, worshiping our wonderful Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ following in his footsteps as it was his custom to remember the Sabbath day. But Jesus doesn't leave it there with the first commandment and the greatest commandment. He goes on and says, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Because of course, we know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He loves everybody. So to love God, how can we therefore hate our neighbor? Because God was loved, because he loves everybody, we therefore love others as well. And he calls us to this standard. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now that's difficult because we all know we take good care of ourselves, don't we? But to love your neighbor as yourself, 
Jesus is raising the bar very high. And like I just explained at the beginning, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jews and Samaritans hated one another, and yet the Samaritan has mercy on this Jew who is half dead. And I love this picture because here this Samaritan is carefully showing compassion for this half-dead Jew. And he is taking time, he's risking his own safety, because the robbers could come out from the trees and beat him up as well, kill him. And also, of course, we know from the parable that he put a lot of money into this, paying for his care. And how does Jesus conclude that parable from Luke chapter 10? He challenges all of us to have mercy as well. For Jesus said, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, The one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. Go and do Show mercy. So the challenge that we are called to by Jesus Christ to love our neighbor as ourself is indeed a high calling. So we look around us and we look for those in need. And everyone needs encouragement, for example. We look around for those that are suffering and we do all that we can to help others to truly love our neighbor as ourselves. And when you consider these commandments, as Martin Luther considered them, you think, how can I live this out? How can I truly love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind? How can I truly love my neighbor as myself? And Luther has a great answer to that. This is a great quote. Listen to this. You may say, it is utterly impossible to keep these two commandments. Yes, it is. You cannot do it. God must do it in you. For him, it is possible. Again, you may say, it is utterly impossible to keep these two commandments. Yes, it is. You cannot do it. God must do it in you. For him it is possible. So how does God work, therefore, in us to help us to begin to love God and love others? Of course, he works through the word of God and through the sacraments. Thank God, God is at work, and you have come to church. This is so important. Showing your love to God so that you might grow in your faith and grow in love towards God and towards others. May God then fill our hearts with love for him and love for others. Thankful that Jesus Christ has saved our souls by the gospel. For Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, he was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, 
and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 